This is how much money I made on a gaming channel in January of 2024. It may not look like much from the outside looking in, but from the inside, it's looking really nice. I like to think about it mathematically where before I was making zero dollars and now I'm making greater than zero dollars. And that's an infinitely higher number than zero is anything above zero. Now, if you were just here for the amount of money that a certain amount of views got you on a gaming channel in 2024, I mean, that was just shown to you. So you're good to go. You get on out of here. Have a great day. Uh, I'll maybe see you in another video. If you want more context, if you want the entire topic of content creation expounded upon, that's what the rest of the video is going to be for. Maybe you're already participating in the content creation rat race, but if you are thinking about getting into it, I'm here to maybe alleviate some of your worries or maybe double down on some of your worries or make everything just worse or better, whatever. Just add context and then let you decide for yourself exactly what all that information means. So first we'll go over the channel itself and then we'll go over the niche and everything related to that and why it's this amount of money for this amount of views. And then we'll go over everything that I learned after doing this for the past several months, trying my hardest at it. There's a lot of relevant information. Everything is going to be timestamped in the description below. I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty long video because there is a lot to talk about, but feel free to skip around, bounce around to whatever is relevant. It's all going to be accurately labeled, so nothing misleading or anything like that. Let's get into it. First off, let's talk about why it's this much and what the exact ratio is to views to amount of money gained. It's important to note that the average view duration on my channel is about two minutes long and that equates to about two dollars per 1000 views. Now that average view duration has to do with my editing style, it has to do with the niche that I'm involved in. So that average view duration, it basically dictates how much money you make per view on YouTube. While you're making content online, there's going to be a lot of external ways, I guess you could say, that interconnect with YouTube. Ways to make money, such as Twitch, such as Patreon, such as sponsorships. Those things are apparently, I'm, I'm told that's where the real money is. I don't have any of those yet. So, <clears throat> so I'm not really making any <clears throat> real money yet. So now let's talk about the niche specifically, because this is a gaming channel that we're talking about here. Now it's very interesting. I think the niche is the most important part about any channel. My channel in particular, it started from Diablo 4. If you haven't heard about Diablo 4, it's an isometric action role-playing game. I'll just refer to it as an ARPG from now on. And ARPGs in particular, they come and go with the seasons because they are cyclical in nature. The interest in them is cyclical in nature. And seasonal in nature. So it's kind of difficult to measure everything accurately. And if we look back at the analytics of the channel, you'll notice that it's pretty flatlined. If we look at the one and a half months before it, you know, we, we got a lot of activity and then it's about one and a half months of like pretty steady decline. And then it's a month and a half of popping up again. But in this case, the season that came out for Diablo 4, it wasn't too well received. And so generally the interest around it naturally lessened. The niche that I specifically built for myself was one of build guides and tips and tricks videos, sort of that kind of realm of things, right? So solving someone's problem, finishing an equation for them that they couldn't quite figure out themselves, like helping them on that last step. And in this niche, there's an expectation that you'll provide a build guide for someone to follow. And generally, no matter how long your videos are, no matter how much effort you put into them, no matter how engaging they really are in this niche specifically, the answer to the problems isn't in the video itself. It's in the build guide. So they can click the link and then click off and then be like, okay, thank you, like, and then leave. So the average view duration on my videos it's pretty low on average, but the average engagement rate, meaning likes and comments and click through rate, and we'll talk about everything. Those are all generally higher. The YouTube algorithm is basically based off of engagement in general, which is a culmination of your click through rate and average view duration and the ratio of people that like and dislike and comment on your video as opposed to just not interacting with it whatsoever. Since the YouTube algorithm is based off of all these things, my niche really only targets about half of those, right? So by the very nature of ARPG games in general, most content creators would 
probably agree with me that they are pretty difficult to make content for. You have to base the content around build guides like what I've been doing, or you have to base it around you as a person. And you as a person, um, no one cares about. <laughs> if you've ever heard the kind of phrase that the world is harsh or the general sentiment that nobody gives a shit about you, I would 100% agree that that's the case, especially on YouTube. It's cutthroat. It's all numbers. It doesn't matter what your feelings behind something are. If it's not good content and it doesn't have a good engagement value as evaluated by the YouTube algorithm, it's not going to be shown to anybody. And so nobody's really going to care. And well, it, well, nobody really cares. And so the YouTube algorithm won't show it. I kind of said that backwards at the start. So I kind of stuttered because it's up to the people if your content is good. It's not up to YouTube if your content is good. And that's something that's kind of hard to grapple with. You, you have to cut down on your own ego a lot when you start to do content creation and refine your methods. And so what I realized is that I got lucky or my second and my fourth video ever both got over 30,000 views. Now, if anyone here has ever made a YouTube video before and uploaded, they'll know that's insane. That's a huge deal. But I really did get lucky. I just happened to solve a problem that was a widespread problem, that was a topical problem, and that no one else had yet solved. And so I solved it, posted it, and then made a follow-up video improving on that solution. And both of those received an equal amount of engagement. And the YouTube algorithm recognized that I was the only person solving this problem at the time. And that's why both of those videos got pushed as far as they did. And not just ARPGs in particular, but I would say all games have problems to be solved. And that's why gaming channels are so lucrative or so straightforward, I'd say, because new games are constantly coming out. We're basically in a golden age of gaming right now. And there's a new major release every couple of weeks you see five to ten new youtubers pop up that focus on those games in particular and try to get a like a foothold they, they try to become relevant through providing that kind of problem solving or solution to new topical problems that no one else has done yet the same way that I happen to do on my second and fourth video ever. Uh, so my niche does offer like easygoing and straightforward amounts of content creation to be had, but it's a catch 22 because it doesn't really fill in like four of the main engagement metrics that the algorithm of YouTube bases how well or how engaging or how good of a video that you actually have is. So, so easy content, but not highly rated by YouTube. And that's just the nature of it. And to compare to other niches on the platform, let's take a look at Gotham Chess, for example, probably the biggest chess YouTuber in the world. I heard offhand in one of his videos that he had a average view duration of over 14 minutes and I thought to myself holy shit that is wild that is amazing but the chess commentator and reviewing niche is a naturally high engagement rating one because chess players in general and people generally interested in chess have higher attention spans and they want to see the full length of a game they want to see complex positions explained and all the different lines that you can go down in these complex positions further explain and they want to see the classic and he sacrifices it's like a meme in the chess community as a whole anyways um so by the very nature of that niche you uh like you just have higher engagement metrics in general. And so choosing your niche is extremely important and you don't wanna take it lightly. However, you do just wanna start making videos. And that's what we'll talk about next is how practice makes perfect and repetition makes reasonable results. TM. The entirety of the content creation process from start to finish, when you first think of an idea for a piece of content to writing the script for it, to recording it, to editing it on a software, on a timeline, and then to actually publishing it, every single step takes a shit ton of time. But that amount of time becomes smaller and smaller and smaller as you gain more proficiency in the entire editing process. The more repetitions you put into the entire process, it's just ev everyone knows the more practice you put into something, generally the better you're gonna be at it. For example, at this moment right now, I'm just speaking to the camera because I think that just talking to the camera is probably a more engaging way of communication as opposed to like trying to not slightly look off 
camera at like a script that's behind the camera, but instead just thinking about something and then just talking about something, just thought to mouth, just constant flow, like a like slam poetry or something. I am replicating what a couple other large successful YouTubers do. And that's what I would recommend you do as well, is that as you get better at the entirety of the content creation process, there's a lot of nuances that you can change, like just speaking from mind to mouth rather than off of a script in particular that can really help you tighten up and refine your content as well as speed up the process. Now, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen other videos that talk about how to be successful on YouTube. I would have to agree with all those videos in saying, just start making videos. Now, the whole concept for this comes from how to be successful in general. And that general concept is to have as few barriers between you and what you consider successful as possible. So if you want to start learning how to play guitar, you should get a guitar stand and a guitar and that's and, and a pick and you just start playing the guitar. When you're done with the guitar, you put it on the guitar stand and next time you want to play it, all you have to do is pick it up. Step one, take off the pick, step two, and then start playing it. Step three, never put your guitar away in a guitar case when you're just at home or in a practice area for guitar. That will sabotage you. You'll probably put the guitar away. You'll probably lock it inside of the case. You'll probably put it in a closet somewhere. And then when you go to play the guitar again, you'll have to take the entire case out. You'll probably have to shuffle some stuff around at step one. Then you'll have to take the guitar out of the case at step two. Then you'll probably have to take the pick out step three. Then you'll probably have to tune the guitar because the guitar like knobs for the strings probably got slightly undone or like messed with because it made contact with the inside of the case. That's step four. And then when it's tuned, now you play it, that's step five. That's a lot of steps. It's a lot more time invested in order to just start playing the guitar. Same thing with anything you want to do in life. You want to remove as many barriers as possible from the things that you truly want to do. So in the case of content creation, which is what we're talking about right now, the biggest barriers in the content creation process are time, ego, and skill. So time, if you're willing to put in the time, that's great. A lot of the times your ego, and I mean ego overarching as like, this isn't good, I won't publish this. No, you should probably just publish it. Or ego that has to do with your personality and your work ethic and it's like, oh, I, like I did a lot yesterday so I'm not gonna do so much today. Scrap all that, get rid of your ego as much of it as possible, kill that shit. Just put in the time, put in the effort and you'll gain the skills from the effort and well, the time you just have to put in the time. Let's talk about clickbait and click through rate. Now, click through rate is the final metric that the YouTube algorithm uses to essentially rate your video, like how engaging it is. And not just your thumbnail, but also your title and also a little bit of your description. Not too much though. We have an interesting meta on YouTube right now, which is the reaction meta. Now, you may not like reaction streamers or YouTubers, but they get views. Now, now, why do they get views? That's an interesting question. Is because they're packaging and refurbishing already made content in a way that is preferable to the viewer. So say you make a piece of content, it gets 10,000 views. Say a reaction to it gets 100,000 views. What's the problem there is that your packaging of that content is probably subpar or it's at least lesser quality than that of the reaction repackaging of it. Now that's not always the case, but it's very often the case. And even if it isn't the case, you should still pay attention to what they're doing successfully in order to get more views on that piece of content. And most of the time, it's just a better thumbnail. It's a better title. It's a better description. And it's also, you know, like a consistent viewer base. And that does help. However, the first few parts help more. I see a lot of channels with about three to 5,000 subscribers that have multiple millions of views videos. And that is just a testament to how little subscriber count really matters and how much content and packaging matters. Again, regardless of how you feel about the reaction meta on YouTube, it's there's something to learn there. You should never scoff at something that has a lot of views because it did something right. It struck just the right chord in so many people's hearts that YouTube recognized that and promoted it. That's literally just how it works. 
good content gets promoted. And that's also part of the ego that was mentioned in the last segment of this video is if your content is not being pushed, you have to really ask yourself, you have to be as objective with yourself as possible. Is this good? A lot of the times it's going to be no. Most of the time it's going to be no. Probably for every single person watching this video, it's going to be no. Extremely rare cases where good content is not pushed by the algorithm. Just assume if your video is not getting views, it is simply not a good video. And that's okay because we can all improve, right? What is the gym bros greatest saying? It's okay to be weak. It's not okay to stay weak. And so for content creation, it's okay to make bad content, but if you wanna be successful, it's not okay to keep making bad content and not improving whatsoever. All right, yeah. So instead of talking about it tangentially to reaction YouTubers and streamers, let's talk about it directly. The packaging of content. So the title, the thumbnail, the description, let's get into it. What I've come to realize on my own, as well as seeing other people talk about these, but I'll just state three specifically, is that for thumbnails, you need intrigue, you need familiarity, or you need shock value. Now, you'll see on a channel like Asmongold TV, every single one of his videos is packaged with familiarity, his face. He's an extremely famous individual. So when you see his face on a video, you know it's gonna be relevant to him or he's gonna participate in that content somehow. But then the other two topics, shock value and intrigue, are also utilized in his thumbnails and in his titles. It's about 70% intrigued, 30% shock value, I would say for him in particular. Most reaction streamers and YouTubers, they tend to have like 100% shock value and 100% familiarity. So thumbnails and titles, and it's all like over the top and it's just in your face and it's assaulting, but it works. So, I mean, like you may not like it, but it works. Everyone needs to do it. Everyone needs to, utilize those three aspects somehow. And so if you're watching this video, you probably are a smaller YouTuber or you're not a YouTuber at all. So our familiarity is minimal, it's zero. If you put your face on a thumbnail, no one's gonna recognize it. They're gonna be like, what the fuck is going on here? They're, they're just probably not gonna click on the video. So your click-through rate goes down, which means your engagement rating for that video gets worse in the algorithm's eyes. So you wanna change the thumbnail. In my niche in particular, because I do sort of build guides for an RPG, those build guides are based around skills or their cornerstones are skills. And so I take these skill icons, blow them up, increase their exposure, increase their saturation, their contrast, make them look nice, give them a, like a glowing outline, you know, what have you, to really draw one's attention to those icons in particular because those are familiar. And it's intriguing because it's a it's inherently solving a problem that someone is looking for in particular, right? It's familiar and intriguing, and that's basically all my thumbnails are familiar and intriguing. There's almost no shock value. Shock value is typically used for clickbait. It doesn't need to be that. If something is genuinely shocking, put it in the thumbnail. But if you're playing something up to be shocking, that's just a bad habit. That's probably a bad habit. You should probably knock that off because um, it'll probably backfire at some point. I'm not 100% sure on that. So, you know, what, what do I know? I'm super small in comparison to people who use a lot of shock value in their packages. But um, now if you want to double down on your content creation and also stream, regardless of what platform you want to stream on, little fun fact, you'll probably convert convert around one active consistent viewer every 200 subscribers or so. That's just something I noticed. It's pretty interesting. I just thought I'd throw that out there. If you just offer people value, they will like your video. If it's relevant to someone and it's significant to someone, they will subscribe to you. They will comment on your video like, hey, I like this video. Like people just do that. Don't give up. Just keep on hustling. Just keep on just keep on going, keep on trying your best. Um, also, tell me what your favorite Taylor Swift song is in the comments, because um, if you made it this far into the video, I guess you deserve a reward, which is knowing that I, the um, light-skinned black guy in a pink shirt, 
um, Ms. Swifty, low key. That's the video. It's just dream.